GH Dog TV, your number one TV for all dog lovers. East Legon Veterinary Center. You are watching GH Dog TV. Keep watching. Thank you. So I have the boss man himself here of Frank Clark Kennel and you can see this beauty over here. I'm already in love with this dog. Boss, welcome to the show. Thank you. Nice dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruno is a very nice dog. Uh, um, I got it from uh, one of the guys that rejected uh, him some time ago. Wow, we are going to talk more about Bruno and also about the dogs. But then let me ask you to introduce yourself to my lovely viewers over here. What's your name? Where are you from? And all of that. Um, my name is Francis Eji, and then I'm at the France Law Kennel. Um, I'm a gun, but uh, actually, I don't know how to speak gun. <laughs> yeah, I go more with the fancy line. Yeah, yeah, and also um, the dog breeder or dog lover, as people may see. Yeah, 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 that's who I am. Wow, Frank Law. So why did you choose the name Frank Law Kennels? Or is it France Law or Frank Law? France Law. France Law. Francis and Laurentia. Okay, that means I've been getting the name wrong. Okay, okay, okay. Lovely. It's not Frank Law, it's France Law. France Law. France Law. Okay, so why the name France Law? Um the France Law is a family name. Um uh, my mom used it, my dad used it. It's like uh, anytime that we have any business running up, that's the name that we normally use. But whoever is running that business at that time has to add the name to the, 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 the France law. Yes, yeah, so this time around, since I'm the one doing it, I just choose the France law only because I'm Francis and my sister is Laurentia. So I just took that name to be the France law. Wow. France law. That, that, that's a wonderful combination. Francis and Laurentia. Yeah. Okay, sir. So, um, Mr. Francis, how did you become a dog lover? How did the whole thing start? Um, actually, my dad is a vet, and uh, I had a passion for animals since I was a kid. So, as I grew up, I realized that, no, I love both, or let's say all animals, but the dog side was too strong that uh, I said, no. If I have other local dogs, I have to now advance myself into the foreign line and then see how best I can also go through that side. So I ended up getting one American Bulldog called Jesse. Started with it for some time. Then through it, the love grew up and then I became who I am now. Wow. So you didn't start with a mongrel or any other. You just started straight with an American Bulldog. American Bulldog, yes. Wow. So how did the whole breeding thing set in? Did you get the dog for the purpose of breeding or it was just for, um, should I say, companionship? How did this idea of breeding start? Um, I saw this American Bulldog video on uh, YouTube and the way the aggressive instincts was, I said, no, I have to get one and then try as much as possible to build it up so that if I take it out, people see the dog and then they'll hype it. But it's like when I brought the dog in, I realized that the, the love for the dog was too great. So I said, no, then instead of just keeping it for security, I just have to do more than the security work. Yes, yeah, so I started doing the breeding line, that's breeding it, and then as far as breeding is concerned, show her the love that um, bounce with it. Wow, wow, wow. So you started breeding the American Bulldog. Was the dog a male or female? Female. Female. So how did you get it crossed and all of that? Um, there was one kennel at uh, Adenta, that's uh, Agbe's place. Yeah, so that was where I took it initially to start the crossing and then got some puppies out of um, out of it. Okay, okay. So you went to Pet Planet, if I'm getting it right. Um, I okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pet Planet, yeah. I don't know the name for the pet shops and other things, but the only name I call him is Agbi. Yeah, Agbiko. Yeah, Atadenta is the. Yeah. So um, after getting the American Bulldog, getting the puppies and all of that. What, did, what again did you do? Did you get another dog as well or...? Um, when I got the American Bulldog, I, that was the only dog I had at that time. But as time goes on, it got a bit sick and then I lost it. And then as I lost it, I didn't have any money. So 
I just brought up the idea that uh, anyone that has a dog that wants to abandon or wants to just give away, I'm willing to pick up so that uh, I'll take care of the dog because I didn't have money on me at that time. All my money was all that used in buying that dog and then I lost it. So to start from the scratch again, I didn't have that kind of money to raise another puppy or another dog. So I went out to tell friends, Charlie, if someone wants to give away his dog, just let me know. And then through it, people started bringing their rejected dogs and then I started taking care Then I just came up again. Wow, wow, wow. This is awesome. So if I'm getting it very well, it was your friends you actually talked to. Yeah. And then they would link up with you if somebody had a rejected dog. Yes, yes, yes. So this dog sitting here was an abandoned dog. Abandoned dog, abandoned dog, rejected. It was given to me to give to these uh, people that eat dogs to just kill for, for, for the table. Yeah, that's what I'll put it. This beautiful dog yes, here. Yes, I see, I see. This beautiful dog. This beautiful dog. <laughs> Why, w- which condition was this dog in that the owner wanted to just give it out for somebody to eat um it had skin condition um the hair was off he had wounds all over the place and then rashes so um you know people when they see their dog in a bad condition instead of them taking time to maybe analyze the situation and then get good people or experienced people to take care of it for them they would just feel like i'll spend a lot to just give out the dog and then so when i brought it the hair was off he couldn't eat um all wounds all over the legs were swollen yeah so i just said okay i uh, i went for one dog show at uh, jowulu and i saw the way people were using german shepherd so since i started taking people's dog i've never had anyone to give me a german shepherd so to have this one let me just take my time and then see how i can help this dog and if it becomes the perfect dog i want then i just keep it yeah so that was the whole story i still can't believe it viewers you can see on the screen that's the 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 photos over there that was the before of the dog i think even with these pictures the dog was recovering yes he was recovering at that time he was recovering because i nearly gave up i took to some vets and then they told me that there was no hope because i've waited for so long before bringing a dog so there was no hope so my junior brother just told me charlie you can do it i know you have the love for the animal just try let's try and do something you can do it so I said, okay, if you have said it, then I also give it a try and see how best uh, the dog can recover from that. So we started giving it the bath, using the drugs that I had, and then a little experience I got from other people. And then here he is. So what methods did you use? Because the hair is very colorful. A lovely friend here has a very, I don't know, the very bright colors. How did you do this thing? I'm still, I'm still amazed. <laughs> um you know when dogs have skin condition like this um you stop giving the dog the home chew or whatever chew that we see but you go strictly to the palate or giving it high protein and um, more vitamins for the dog to take so what i did was uh, <clears throat> i got it um nutribite and i was feeding it with uh, chicken raw chicken and aside that i was giving it bath with the uh, alkali side and then also um, i had this oil that i normally prepare on my own so I used that oil on it and then bathed it every three or four days, uh, four times in a week. Yes. Uh-huh. And after that too, I gave it the mentality that he's not sick, but it's just a period of time. So I took it out, gave it a lot of playing time to play. And then through that, I realized that there were little changes coming up. And then I said, no, since the changes have started, let's just pick it from there and then make a good work out of it. Wow. Dog lovers, this is Bruno right here. This is Bruno. You can see Bruno. You can see the before pictures. And this is how Bruno is looking. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still astonished. In case you just tuned in, you're on GH Dog TV, your number one dog TV for all dog lovers. And if this is your first time of watching a video on this channel, you kindly subscribe to our channel for amazing dog content. It's all about dogs. We get interactive with dog breeders dog lovers dog trainers and i have mr francis here with me the boss of frank lockheader and just let me inform you in case you're in need of puppy milk dog feed for your dogs don't look anywhere just look for eminent dog feed and puppy milk there are numbers on our screen just pick them up give them a call and they'll just deliver to you anywhere you are okay boss so um is bruno the first dog you actually took in is Bruno the first abandoned dog? No, 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 no. I got um one boabu initially, but I took that one to my mom's place. 
so after on i came to get uh, another that was a mixed breed yeah a mixed breed that was also a buabu male yes uh-huh that was the two dogs i had initially when they were rejected then after that before i got a doberman which is at the back right now yeah so that was the ones that came in initially bruno was i think the fourth that came in yeah so how many dogs how many abandoned dogs do you have how many dogs have people ab- abandoned that you have taken in? Um, right now, I have almost about 20 dogs that uh, people have abandoned. Wow. 20 dogs? Yes, almost about 20. Almost. So how do they get to know that you are somebody who picks out abandoned dogs? Eh? Um, sometimes um, people tell them about me. Okay, so it's your friends, just as you said. Yes, as I said. My friends tell them that oh, I have someone that if you don't want your dog, I can call him to come and pick it up. He takes care of those dogs like that. And then the person will call me. And I'm also a part trade dog trainer. So sometimes a client will call, oh, I want you to come and train my dog for me. Then I go start the training, say they'll take the dog to my house. Meanwhile, the client had a motive and the intention that this dog is a troublesome dog. I want someone to take it off. So the moment you take the dog to your house to go and train for the client and then return it, you now call the client, he's not picking up. You call the client, he's not picking up. Then at the end of the day, the dog now stays at my place and then um, he becomes mine. So they don't even call to? They don't call to even find out how the dog is doing or anything. They will just leave the dog for you like that because it's like you've taken a big burden from him since you brought the dog to the house. So he doesn't want to even come to you again. That's all. Wow. So has um, the the um, the former owner of Bruno seen Bruno? Yeah, yeah, seen Bruno. Yeah, seen Bruno. He saw Bruno on my status, and then he called that uh, I've really done well taking care of the dog. So he wants us to sell the dog because uh, he was having a little financial problems. So we should sell the dog and then split the money up. Then I told him that my brother, huh, you are joking, because per what I've spent in the dog, the time I've spent in the dog, I can't sell it. So it will be better I use it for breeding, get some money out of it, and then later on, if you decide to sell it, we can sell it and now split up the But he was still insisting. I said, no, then let's forget about the topic because I spent a lot in that dog and I can't just sell it out like that. And I even asked him, how much should we sell the dog? He said 3000 and we should split it 50 50. And that was what blew my mind off that I wouldn't have any interaction with him anymore. And since that time, he has not called, but he has been seeing me posting Bruno and all those things. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, it seems Bruno, yourself and Bruno, you have this kind of special bond. Yeah, we have a strong bond because um, dogs in general, the way you spend time with the dog makes you create a very strong bond with it. Um, if you have a dog, you just keep it as a security dog. It will just behave as a security dog. If you keep it like a human being, it will behave like a human being to you. Yes, and the way I'm, I play with Bruno, the way I take it inside, go out with it, we go on dog shows, play at the beach and all those stuff. It's very difficult for me to sell Bruno out. And even when I'm playing with other dogs or even humans, you see him being jealous inside because he feels like I've rejected it. Yes, so I always tell people that the bond I have with Bruno is not for sale. We can't sell it. And yeah, and even I saw that Bruno lives with you in your in my bedroom. He sleeps in my bedroom. He even watches TV See, with you in the living room. In the living room, of course. Yes, and what I've realized is the best shoe that it wants is the Nat Geo. Yeah, when he sees the bears, the lions, and the cats mm-hmm. moving our receipts, all attention on the TV, sometimes he had to back to make you understand that he's excited with what he's seeing. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned something earlier when you mentioned the dog show. I saw you at the dog show and was that Bruno with you? Was yeah. that Bruno? Yeah, yeah, that was Bruno. That was Bruno. How far did he go in the dog show? Um, it went well. Um, he got the second position in the open class and there. Wow. Yeah. In the open class, second position. An abandoned dog. An abandoned dog. An abandoned dog. Uh-huh. Tell me more, tell me more. <laughs> um, I went to the show. Normally, I normally go on ordinary shows. I've never been to the dog handling show before. So um, I saw it online. I said, okay, let me just go there and see what is going on. But most of the time, when I'm going to programs like that, he's the only dog that I take along because of the bond I have with it. So I took it there. I saw that, okay, things were going fine. I said, okay, then let me just try and then join the program. So we were just through it. And then one guy came, Ahmed, told me that Charlie, bro. Your dog is a very nice dog, but the weight is too much. So just try as much as possible to cut down the weight and let's see. 
Uno can get something out of here. And I said, okay. So I started working on it. That was uh, cutting down the feed, training it almost two times a day, feeding it two times, two times. Let's say every two days I feed it once, every two days I feed it once to cut down the weight. So went for the show and then God being so good, he got the second. Wow, wow, wow. So uh, Ahmed Von Caps, Ahmed, Ahmed of Von. Yes, Ahmed of Von Caps. Yeah. Okay, so Ahmed of Von Caps, if you're watching, big shout outs to you. So this dog won the second position. Yeah. Yeah, he won the second position and he even got the certificate from that. Okay, so you have the certificate? Yeah, yeah I have the certificate. Oh, okay, can we show it out to prove? Yeah, yeah, yeah I have the certificate. Wow, wow, wow. So here, here's the certificate and from the Kennel Union of Ghana. Wow, National Dog Show 2019. That was the one held at Jowoli yeah. on 7th December 2019. Yeah. Okay, okay, let me read. Certificate of participation. This is to certify that Bruno Breed German Shepherd Dog owned by Francis A.J. Won the Opens Class Second Place Mail. Signed by the KUG President Dr. Peterson and FCI Judge from Bulgaria, Mr. Antoine Lebarov. Wow. This is no joke. Check out the check out the, the, the certificate right here. Congrats, 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 boys. Thanks, 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 thanks. thanks, thanks. So is Bruno a trained dog? Yeah, Bruno is a trained dog. He's a trained dog. At least he has, I would say, about 50% of the training that we'll say is a basic obedience training. Yeah, he has about 50% of that. Wow, so can you show us something? Yeah. yeah. Lovely viewers, let's check Mr. Francis out as he shows us some few skills with Bruno. Yeah, Good boy. Very good. Sit. Good. Sit. Good boy. Yes. Down. Down. Very good. Yes. Good boy. Very good. Yes. Sit. Sit. Yes. Stay. 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 Yes. Good boy. Lie. Lie. Very good. Hello guys, yeah. Um, this is your man I call the guard from Fast Forward. Charlie, keep watching GH Dog TV. Yeah, stay tuned. Okay, welcome back to the show. So you just saw it with your eyes as Bruno was displaying those uh, obedience skills and it was it was marvelous. It was marvelous. I really loved it. I'm sure you also enjoyed it. That's Bruno there. So boss, um, I think this the part where we get to see the other dogs in your kennel. Yeah. Yes, you mentioned that they were all abandoned. abandoned. Yes. Yes, they are all abandoned. Not even one I'm getting even contact from their owners. Wow. Now let's check them all out. Okay, so there's another dog here who was also abandoned. Boss, can you tell us something about this dog? Um, this is uh, Foxy. Um, the client called me about, uh, let's say, a month ago that uh, he had this Swiss Shepherd that uh, um, because of his time, he's not able to take care of the dog. About three years now, he has not seen heat. He has no puppies of the dog. So someone told me, told him about me. So he just wants me to come and pick the dog and then just see how best I can take care of the dog for him. And I said, okay. So I just went in for the dog brought it to my house and then not heard from him since that time but uh, I know one day he'll be coming back but if he doesn't come back then there's nothing I can do but for now he just gave it to me and then I've not heard from him since okay so we have another German Shepherd here what's what about this dog um her name is Lucky and uh, one guy from Adenta um, called uh, Kontakra I know most of the breeders know that name yeah, he called me and then told him that he had a dog that uh, a client doesn't want and he's having a problem with the skin, as most of them usually say. So I just went to his house, saw the dog. When I saw the dog, I nearly gave up because it's like he was just the same as Bruno. And I, if I think about the stress I went through with Bruno and I saw this dog, 
I didn't want to pick it. But I had only one German Shepherd male. I didn't have a female. So I just wanted to get puppies so that I can have the Bruno line. And I wasn't getting. So when I saw this one, I said, okay, let me give this one to a try to see. Perhaps he might become like Bruno or he might also give me puppies from Bruno that if I see any solid puppy out of it, I'll pick the male out to represent Bruno someday. Yes, yeah, so I went to pick it, started grooming, gave it the same treatment as I gave to Bruno. And then the improvement started. But what I like about it is most of the times, dogs, when you bring them and they are having bad conditions, the appetite level normally goes down. But this dog has a very high appetite level. So that gives me the encouragement that since it's eating well, that means treatment can be very fast and then can help him heal very quickly. Wow, so for how long has Lucky been with you? Uh, Lucky, almost. Oh, the name is Lucky. Lucky. Okay, Lucky. I thought it was Blackie. Lucky. 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 Okay. Lucky, yeah. Um, about two months. She came before Foxy came. Yeah, she came before Foxy came. So about two months. I would say more than two months because I've crossed it. Um, the normally pregnancy takes two months and I crossed it and the two months has passed, but he lost the puppies at that time. So I would say roughly like three months. Yeah. Three to four months, I'm sure. That's the, the average time I can say that uh, she has been with me. Okay, so we move on to the next dog after Lucky. But then, let's do this quick one. Just in case somebody wants to link up with you for puppies, wants to actually dash you an abandoned dog, without, because that's what you, you, yeah. you're you you known for yeah. mostly, yeah. right? Yeah. Maybe somebody wants to link up with you for dog training and all of that. What? How can the person reach you? Um, the person can call me on my contact. That's 0245-388-195 or 026-5418-819. Yeah, that's my contact. That's if anyone wants to contact me, he can just contact me through that. Yeah, or he can contact me through my Facebook. That's a uh, Facey Thirty at Facebook. Yeah, Face E Facey Thirty. Can you spell it out so that they can check it out? Nah, that, that's F uh, F A C double E three zero. Yeah. Okay. okay. Facey Thirty. So he just dropped out all of um, how you can link up with him. Just link up with him. We are still checking out the dogs. We are not done yet, so don't go anywhere. Um, this is uh, Gaddafi. Yes, uh, brought to me by Fast Forward. Uh, he also told me that uh, the client wanted to give the dog out some time ago, and uh, I went in terms with him because I'm a Doberman fan in general. So when I see Dobermans like this, uh, I rush for them. And so he just told me I went for it, and then I had a little term with Fast Forward. But the deal hasn't gone through yet. But I'm still hoping that the puppies will just come and then we'll just hit it from there. Yeah. So at the moment he's with me brought by fast forward but i have to get some puppies out and then give him his share out of it and then the dog is now mine yeah well so for how long has the dog been with you this one has been with me since last year yeah since last year so it came on heat the first time uh, we took it to crossing but it seems like the crossing didn't pick up so he's now on the second heat that i've started crossing that was only yesterday that i did the first crossing so i'm just hoping that uh, this time around we get good results from here yeah, this one is not nice. That's the name the owner gave to it. Not nice. I don't know why he gave it not nice, but uh, I went to the owner's house and I realized this dog has been in chain for two years without taking off the chain. I asked them, what's the problem? He said, the dog is too aggressive. Um, moreover, my house is not fenced. So with this dog and his temperament, it's very difficult for me to handle her. So I want to sell the dog out. And I said, okay, I'll try and then get you someone if anyone shows interest. But everyone seeing the dog's video will tell me the dog is too old. And then with the kind of aggression the dog is having, the person can't handle. So it's like she was there sometime, then she just called, Charlie, come and pick the dog and then take it to your house. If you get a new one, just give it. If you want it to, you just take it. I said, okay. Then I just went, since it's a double man, I will not say no. I went for it and then started grooming it bit by bit. It has been with me for let's say five to six months, but unfortunately, it has come on heat. I've crossed and now I'm seeing results that uh, it has conceived. So I'm just hoping for the best. Yeah, since it's the first time that um, getting pregnant at my place, I'm just hoping that she will be a very good mother and then take care of the puppies as well. Yeah. So for now, the owner has given it to me. Final. She is not coming back for it, and that is it. Yes. That's all. She has just left it for me. Because if I take it to a place again, there's nothing she can do about it. So now it's with me. I do everything. Not even one deal or anything that I'll say I'm taking to the person. Yeah. Just abandon and smile. So this is not nice. Now nice. Not nice. Now nice. 
<laughs> nice one. Yeah, this is Prado. Um, he was given to me by my auntie, Aspintex. Yeah, um, this dog is very aggressive and then because of his aggressive instincts, they couldn't come out of their own house, likewise the kids and then the husband. It was a security man that was handling the dog whilst it was a puppy. So since um, the salary of the security man always kept on coming, Fabika home, Fabika home and all those stuff, my auntie now said no. I should just come for the dog and see if I can give you some kind of training for it to come down so that it can handle. But eventually, because they still have that kind of motive, I have been able to do it. You know as you are standing with it, it's not attacking you. Yes, but they still have that kind of motive that the dog is aggressive. So they just want the dog to just stay with me permanently and then they are not coming for it. So they've now gotten other two boobos in their house and then they can't pair with this one as well. So it now stays with me permanently. This one is Warrior. That's a Doberman. Um, I initially said that I'm a Doberman fan, so I love Dobermans. Yeah, and this is my next dog. I'll say aside Bruno, he's one of the dogs I love most. Why? Because he's very aggressive. His aggressive instincts is very high. During the night, during the day, anywhere you take it, he will just show that yes, he's aggressive and makes me feel good when I'm walking around with the way he protects and his protecting the instincts that he has. Yeah, I like it most and. Uh, he was also given to me by a guy at Medina. Um, he traveled, gave the dog to his boys, and because of the way he was aggressive, they couldn't handle it. The wife was complaining, the kennel boy, so when he came back, the dog was... You know, Dobermans are not two big dogs, they are skinny dogs, so eventually just looking at the Doberman slamming down, you know how it's going to be. So he just called me and said, oh, brother, I heard about you, and uh, the one guy from um, Boshe told me that you do this job, so... I want you to come for the dog and maybe if you get a puppy or anything, you can just come and give it to me later on. But for now, I just want you to come for the dog. And I said, okay. So I had a, a German Shepherd female. That was Bruno's daughter. So I just took it, gave it to him and then took this one in replacement of um, the other one. So if not because of that puppy, I think this dog would have been abandoned because uh, no one could handle it at that time. No one apart from the owner. And the owner is someone who likes traveling a lot. So the wife, the kids, nobody can now go to the dog. So it's maybe they give it out or they maybe they kill it or something of that sort. Yeah, but I just said I'm a Doberman fan. I still have to go for that dog and then make sure I use it for the best. So I just went it and then took it and brought it to the kennel. What's what about our friend here too as well? This is Sky. Brought from Temakon 11. Yeah. Um, one guy from Kandeshi also linked me that he has someone that uh, wanted to cross his dog. The dog was on heat. He wanted to use my mill in doing crossing. So he gave me a direction. I went to the house to pick the dog. I got there and they told me, Charlie, come on, you see a shoe. Are you aggressive? Are you the end to me? And I said, oh, we are sure. Okay. Move on the corner. Then we went to the dog. I studied the dog and I realized that the way the dog is behaving is not out of aggression, but it's some kind of hyper. They don't like playing with the dog. So if the dog sees them start barking and they think the dog is aggressive. So the man told him that he can't go closer to the dog, but if I can, I should just go and handle the dog. So I went, examined the dog, put my hand at the cage, sniffed me, and I opened the gate. The dog started playing with me. The man said, Charlie, what baby? What they call cross a you know? But men sign for number. Men sign for number. So when you be a fan of brand fashion and but with this one, yeah, we don't like it because people have come to pick it, they couldn't pick it. Aside that, because of this dog, I've gone to court and back because of the way it makes noise for the other neighbors to complain. So, if you can just take it and get me a different puppy, I'll be cool with it because but this particular dog, I don't like it. And I said, okay, I'll just take it to my place. For me, any dog goes, provided the dog is fertile and then can help me in my kennel, I'll just go for it. So, I brought the dog and then God being so good, I came. This dog has produced for me twice and then I just took a puppy to him. I gave him two puppies out of this one. And then since that time, it has been with me and it's still here. This one came to me last year. Um, I'll say last year, that's somewhere about ending of like, last year, that's 2018, ending, then it came. So since that time to this time, it has produced twice. So that's how come Sky came to me in this kennel. Um, this one is uh, Lifeung, given to me by a Chinese woman at uh, Temakomit 11. 
I almost asked live phone. I almost asked if this dog had, was coming from Asia. Yeah, uh, a Chinese woman, and he was traveling. Yeah, she lived at Osu. So um, he gave it to one client at uh, Tema Community 11. And the client called me. At that time, I was working with a training company at Oyarifa. So they told me that uh, someone is my assistant at Tema Community 11, so I should go there and then talk to the man. So I went there. When I went, before I got the man, this was the dog I saw and I, I shook. Because per the aggressive instinct I saw from this dog, I realized that no, I had no hope if I should open that cage. So what I did was, uh, I went there with a motor guy. And uh, I told the guy that since this man wants to give this dog to me, I have to take it by all costs. So um, I got this rope that they hang things on and then threw it around the neck just as they do to cattles try to control it then place another one at the leg pull it back for the vet to inject it for it to sleep so that we could put it in a car and bring because with the kind of aggression that it was having no one could control it it was extreme extreme even the owner if you tell it to give it food you see the owner shaking because he's scared he can just break down the cage and then come out so i was even scared at that time but i said no I know that if the dog have eye contact to you and then it smells your paws to, feel, uh, to know that uh, you are scared of it, it's going to react. So I just got that courage, did what I have to do. So we just gave it the injection, got slipped, and then by the time you woke up, it was here. And since that time, and one thing about dogs are, when you change their location, even though it's aggressive, the moment you change the location, the aggressive instance comes down by at least 50% or 40% comes down. So it's now going to find who to trust again. So you dominate on that kind of portion and then make sure that the dog knows you or trusts you. And then after that, it's going to become yours forever. So that's how I did it. And then when it came here, it has never attacked me. It has never done anything silly. Whatever I say, he does. Takes his on walk, comes back, and then he's cool to go. He doesn't do anything that makes me upset or anything. Yeah. So that's a life phone. Life phone. Yes. Life phone right here. Yeah, life phone. Because this initially, one. when it came, you know, since it was from a Chinese woman, English was a problem. Wow. Sit, it won't sit. Come, it won't come. Whatever you do, it doesn't know anything. So controlling it was a bit difficult. But you know, since you know that you want to train this dog or you want to work with this dog, the language you are using is what you have to use. No matter what, they also look at signs. So whatever you are doing, they will still know that, okay, calm means like this, it's calm, sits, goes down, and then that's all. He just got a little uh, command and then he became a cool dog. Yeah. Nice one. Okay. Boss, what about these two? Um, this is Shelter, the black one is Shelter, and this one is Lily. Um, Lily came all the way from West Hills Moor. Yes, uh, the client, they, he wasn't aggressive, but the client couldn't take care of it. Um, he had other three dogs in addition to this one, but he was like, uh, he's not having time. So he just wants to give the dogs out and then anyone that can take care of the dog, just come for it. When the dog gives birth, you just give maybe a puppy two or one or anyone that you want to give. So I just went there, picked the dog and then the dog became mine. It has given birth, that's the puppies of the dog that you saw uh, in the net over there. Yeah, that's a combination of this one and Bruno that gave me that puppies. Yeah, so that's the mother of the puppies. Yeah, it's a Belgian Malinois. Yes, uh -huh, there's a Belgian Malinois, yeah. And then Shota, Shota came from Ashie, just across the, the other land uh, area there. Um, he also, also, he was also not aggressive, but uh, what it was, was uh, the client said he wanted to sell it out. But I went there and I said, no, I wanted to take the dog, but money was a problem. So what I'll do was uh, I'll breed it. And then when I get a puppy, I'll just come and then give you. And he said, okay. But later on, I had a Doberman puppy. So he came over and then said, no, he preferred the Doberman puppy instead of taking the puppy from this one. So he took the Doberman puppy and this one also became mine. So eventually, both dogs are now mine. They can know now. This one is Daisy, uh, the last of all. Um, she came in from Kwabinya. Um, the client called me initially, come and do crossing for me. So I crossed it and then took it to his place. The dog gave it to 12 puppies. And per the way he stressed, taking care of those puppies, the 12 puppies, and I eventually lost all. Didn't get even one. He just called me and said, brother, come and I don't want it again. Come and take it. Because taking care of 12 puppies and then not even getting one CD. And at the end of the day, losing all, someone just gives up. So if I don't go for it, he will just give it to someone. So I had to go for it. So I went to take it and 
I brought it to the kennel and now he's having puppies inside. Yeah, as at this stage, uh, he has uh, three puppies that I'm now waiting for them to be about. Uh, they are almost four weeks now. Yeah, so he's the last one that came in, but eventually uh, gave me good results. Yeah, and then it made me happy as she's around. Yeah. So she's a mixed breed. Um... Yeah, she's a mixed breed with a buabu and a mastiff. Yeah, yeah. Miss B, them. The same as Shelter. Shelter is also a Miss B of a Boabu and a, a Gradient. Yeah, yeah. That's that's how the height is not that much, but at least has about 80% of it being a Gradient. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's it for today's episode on GH Dog TV. If you want us to visit your kennel, you want to link up with us, just pick out the numbers on our screen. 054-337-8662. 054-337-8662. Just WhatsApp, call, and we'll be right there to, to be at your kennel and check out the dogs. I hope you enjoyed today's edition on GH Dog TV. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you are new to always be updated whenever we drop yet another amazing dog content and let me acknowledge our proud sponsor eminent dog feed and puppy milk eminent dog feed and puppy milk you want puppy milk or dog feed for your dogs i can recommend eminent for you just link up with them their number is 0244 820 and you can also follow them on instagram at eminent pet co on Instagram at Eminent Pet Co. My name is Solowan. You can call me the dog blogger and you can follow us on all of our social media handles on Facebook and Instagram at GH Dog Blogger. Instagram and Facebook, GH Dog Blogger. Catch you next time. GH Dog TV, your number one TV for all dog lovers.